observed. We need to go to a synagogue, in particular, the library of a synagogue. In every synagogue library, we find hundreds of books, but there are a few which tower above the rest in authority. These include the Encyclopedia Judaica, the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, the Jewish Encyclopedia. In the oldest of these, the Jewish Encyclopedia, we encounter fascinating new perspectives on the inner teachings of Judaism, perspectives which are well known to most religious Jews, but unknown to Christians. Most Christians believe that the Judaism of the Old Testament is very similar to Judaism today. Yet the Jewish Encyclopedia, in its article on Judaism, says modern Judaism and the Judaism of the Old Testament are very different. It says that after Nebuchadnezzar conquered Judah in the 6th century BC and led the Jews to distant Babylon, the Jews were faced with challenges to their faith they had never before experienced. Ever since the time of Solomon, the religion of Israel had centered around the magnificent temple in Jerusalem with its sacrifices and ritual. The question now became, how could one be a true Jew in a very foreign, even hostile environment? The need arose for a certain class of lay priests called scribes or sophurim to interpret the law in this new setting and make it workable. In time, these scribes became what the New Testament calls the scribes and Pharisees, the greatest legal authorities of Israel for all ages. The Pharisees said there were really two inspired revelations to the Jews. There was the written law of Moses received atop Sinai, but there was also the oral tradition acquired by 70 elders who came to the base of the mountain but were forbidden to proceed farther. The Pharisees said that these 70 elders, or Sanhedrin, received a much more extensive and profound revelation than Moses, a revelation which was never written down, yet took precedent over the written law. When Jesus came on the scene, his reaction was to bitterly denounce this counterfeit tradition. Christ said the Pharisees, by their tradition, had made the law of God of none effect. He considered the Pharisees the most dangerous leadership Israel ever had. In 70 AD, Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. Although Jewish sects such as the Sadducees now disappeared, the Pharisees emerged with even greater power over the Jewish people. The Jewish Encyclopedia describes the new role of the Pharisees. With the destruction of the temple, the Sadducees disappeared altogether, leaving the regulation of all Jewish affairs in the hands of the Pharisees. Henceforth, Jewish life was regulated by the Pharisees. The whole history of Judaism was reconstructed from the Pharisaic point of view. Pharisaism shaped the character of Judaism and the life and thought of the Jew for all of the future. In 135 AD, all Jews were expelled from Palestine. The Pharisees led most Palestinian Jews in a mass migration back to Babylon. The majority of Jews were already in Babylon and had been since the time of Nebuchadnezzar 600 years earlier. Yet around 140 AD, Babylon became the acknowledged land of refuge for world Jewry. For another thousand years, Judaism flourished in Babylon under the leadership of the Pharisees. Great academies of the rabbis were established and thousands of new laws formulated. There, those same Pharisees who killed Jesus Christ remained the undisputed rulers of Judaism. In Babylon, the Pharisees codified their oral traditions into the Babylonian Talmud, the written form of that oral tradition which Jesus so bitterly rebuked. The Talmud reveals how deep was Israel's apostasy. In her beginning, God gave the Hebrews the loftiest, the most upright literature and ethics the world has ever known. Yet when they turned their backs on him, they produced the Talmud, a work which has aptly been called a monument to human folly. The Talmud also helps us understand the basis for Christ's unflattering descriptions of the Pharisees. Jesus described the Pharisees as hypocrites, children of hell, blind guides, whited sepulchers, full of dead men's bones. He even described the Pharisees as children of their father the devil, a murderer from the beginning. 
The Talmud confirms Christ's words. In the Talmud, in Treatise Sanhedrin, an extensive passage describes the right of the Pharisee to kill anyone, just as long as he did so indirectly. As one of dozens of examples, the Talmud tells us that if one bound his neighbor and he died of starvation, he is not liable to execution. In such an indirect manner, the Pharisees also killed Christ. Manipulating the Romans to actually wield the spear and sword, the Pharisees claimed, as their descendants do today, that since the Romans were the direct cause of the death of Christ, it is the Romans, not the Jews, who are guilty. Christ also called the Pharisees adulterers, an adulterous generation. The Talmud provides generous loopholes for adultery. It says the penalty for adultery does not include sex with a minor, the wife of a minor, or the wife of a heathen.